Hello, peeps. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how I successfully managed to cut a um, modified, uh, or at least what I'm calling a modified, um, uh, internal acne thread to make, basically make a nut to fit a somewhat worn um, cross light screw. So this is a 5 8 10 left hand acne. Now, if we look up in the machinery's handbook, it's going to give you all the fun little um, thread geometry, um, all, the, all the, the pitch diameters, all this really great fun stuff, which is, which is obviously where we need to start making a nut here. However, um, the issue with a worn screw is it's not going to look exactly like a perfect screw. Rather, a worn screw wears unevenly. So, in a ideal acne thread, we have the crest width and the root width. Those are going to be identical because it's a brand new nut. However, in a worn screw, the crest is going to be narrower than the root. Why is that? Well, as the nut... Um, goes on this over the years, um, the uh, force is going to push directly on the faces of these, um, of the screws. So it's basically going to wear these areas here. And that's going to have the effect of making the root wider and the crest narrower. So to cut a nut, that fits tight on the screw like this, we need to modify the geometry that the machinery's handbook says, and we need to make the cutter, the crest of the cutter, a little bit narrower than what it actually says. So machinery's handbook says the um, crest width here, which is incidentally gonna be the same as the root width on the nut, that needs to be um, 0371. Um, that's in an ideal world. So what I did was, bec I basically did a, and all of this, you're gonna have to fit it no matter what. Um, so I took a calipers and I measured what was basically the average um, width of the crest here. And I found what was the max and the min. And I sort of guesstimated, so I came up with a figure of about 32 thousandths of the cutter width. So that's basically how I custom ground the cutter here. This is my second attempt at grinding a cutter. The first attempt was this guy here, and you probably can't see this. But the problem was, and when I would cut a thread, you put it in the holder, and this isn't the highest quality boring bar um, in the world. It does have a good bit of flex, but hey, it's a 3 8 it, was, it what fits in there, it's what I have. So the original bit that I made, uh, even if you tighten the grub screw here, the bit would work itself backwards through there. So I made a new bit that is basically, and I'm not gonna take this out because this is this fits in here really tight now and I need to make another couple nuts like this. But the actual bit here looks like that. I ground a notch for the grub screw to fit in there so it gives you a positive lock so there's no positive no possible way the bit could work itself backwards in the boring bar and I got a somewhat better quality grub screw for it. So that took care of that problem. The other issue with this bar is this isn't the heaviest duty lathe, it's only a little 12 inch closing. The 
compound and even the, the, the boring bar, it has a fair amount of flex even when you're walking it. So everything when you're doing these has to be done by fit. So the first attempt at making a nut, and I already slid this one in half, we can see that it's a significantly less depth than what it's supposed to be. And the primary reason for that was this bit working itself backwards through there. So fix that issue and ended up making a new one. Now, when I first cut it, I was going to what uh, Machiner's Handbook said about, uh, right, about 60 depth. Um, that gave too tight of a fit, so I kept adding a little bit more and more depth up until the nut actually fits. Um, so, how did I do this? Well, you fit this guy in there, and because unfortunately I only have one lathe to work with, um, I cut it to what the book said, then I took out the actual cross light screw, and it's actually not that big of a deal. Take this is a tapered hatchet. Um, once you get enough practice, um, it only takes about two or three minutes to pull the cross light screw out. Leave this guy stuck in the chuck and fit it. Um, see how it fits. So if we look right now, have a left hand, okay. So, and this is still a practice one. I'm gonna make one more just to make sure that I have the geometry exactly right. So it's very, it's tight on the, the um, end there. And because obviously most of the wear is here. It's pretty loose there. And, but still backlash is really low about that. And then it really starts tightening up once it starts getting to the end here. Now, I, I don't know if this is the right way to go about this, but Unfortunately, right now, I simply can't afford another lead screw. Clausing wants like 300 bucks for one, and this is a funky one where it has an internal spline, and I don't really have a way of cutting those internal splines, so I just need to make do with what I have. So I'm going to make another one like this, about right about the same fit, and... I'm gonna use some um, lapping compound um, and basically use the aluminum nut as a lap to work those threads at the very end down. So that's where it's definitely tight, but and the, the next one I make, I might actually make it a little bit looser than this. I'll see. Once it gets here, it's pretty loose. And we can see even right now, um, there is, I don't know, about 10, uh, maybe about 20, 10, 20 thousandths or so slop in the um, radial direction. Um, in the axial direction, there's maybe five thousandths of backslash, backlash in the axial direction. But that's basically where we're at. Definitely pretty loose there. So, that's my little way of cutting a, I don't know, I guess you want to call this a renegade Acme nuts, a modified Acme nut, I don't know, whatever is a word for it. Um, but yeah, basically you cut the nut where the root of the nut is narrower than the crest to compensate for worn lead screw. So that's basically it. So um, yeah, if you guys have any uh, questions. Um, hey, and this is the first time I'm doing this, so I hey, could obviously be doing something completely wrong. But um, yeah, just uh, feel free to ask any questions or 
leave comments or whatnot. So thanks for watching.